The Scythians were among the earliest steppe nomads to be remembered in history. Their dominance over the ancient steppe lands lasted from approximately the 7th century BC until the 3rd century BC. Let us explore the world of these warrior nomads, in particular their preferred long-range weapon, the composite recurve bow. The Great Eurasian Steppe is a geographic area which has as its main feature a nearly unbroken sea of grasslands stretching from modern-day Hungary all the way east almost into the Pacific Ocean. It is bound on the north by the forests of Siberia, while on the south there is no abrupt and clear division, although it becomes increasingly dry as one makes their way towards the Middle East and the Gobi Desert. This land was the home of the Scythians. They mainly inhabited the central portion during their time of greatest military strength and influence. This area is known as the Pontic Steppe and is comprised of the area north of the Black and Caspian Seas. These lands also saw the migrations of many nomadic warriors, such as the Huns, Mongols, Magyars and Turks, which we will be discussing in later videos. Another important aspect of the Eurasian steppe is that it was the Silk Road, trade between Western European and Mediterranean cultures and Eastern civilizations such as China and India was facilitated by travel along the east-west expanse of grassland, which we call today the Eurasian steppe. What do we know about the Scythian bow? It is well depicted in ancient Greek artwork, typically on vases. Depictions of the Scythians with their traditional clothing and accessories, including bows, are also well preserved at Persepolis, the capital of the once mighty Persian Empire. We are also extremely fortunate in that the Scythians buried their dead, especially their nobility and royalty, with many of their daily accessories, including their weapons, of which the bow was highly favored. These burials were often constructed with large chambers and an immense mound of earth was piled on top to form a hill. These would have been highly visible in certain areas of the steppe that are typically quite flat. One amazing aspect of the Scythians, much like the Huns and Mongols who came after, was their immense geographical influence. They traded and interacted with the Greeks and Persians and their burials and accompanied artifacts have been discovered far to the east in Xinjiang, China. Although it seems fairly improbable that bows would survive in the archaeological record for many millennia, this has indeed happened. In the following section of the video, we will examine the Scythian bows recovered from burials in China. The following is largely based on the research paper by Stephen Selby and Adam Karpowitz, which investigated the bows on display at the Xinjiang Museum located in Urumqi, Xinjiang, China. The Yanghai Cemetery in Xinjiang contains dozens of burials of Eastern Scythian people. Because of the extremely dry conditions of this arid part of the world, the desiccated bodies and accompanied artifacts they were buried with are all very well preserved. The bodies are mummified. An interesting aspect of these mummies is that they are all of Indo-Aryan type with distinct Eastern European features. It is however likely that the Scythians themselves consisted of several ethnic people who shared a common nomadic culture. Fortunately for our study of history and archery, all of the males were buried with bows and accessories, including bowstrings, arrows and quivers, or juritos, which is an arrow and bow quiver in one. Some of these bows are on display at the Xinjiang Museum, located in Urumqi, Xinjiang, China. The bows are of the distinct Scythian style, with sharp curves and highly reflexed tips. The vast majority of the bows discovered in this region seem to have been built to a very consistently high degree of standardization, with most bows having a crude length of 112 centimeters. The length along the back of the bow is 130 centimeters, and the length of the inner belly of the bow is 141 centimeters. The variation between crude length and the length along the backs and bellies of the bows only varies by plus or minus 2 centimeters. All of the bows discovered possess a high degree of asymmetry. Being made of a composition of materials, namely wood, horn, and sinew, the bows are all relatively consistent in their construction. The cores themselves are made from three layers, 
an inner layer of horn sandwiched between two layers of wood. These parallel lathes of wood are approximately 15 centimeters in length and are spliced together along the length of the bow. These two layers of wood are parallel and wind along the length of the bow. Looking into the bow so we see its cross section, we see these parallel lathes of woods form a triangular shape with the apex towards the belly of the bow. The body of the bow narrows along the extreme curved bending sections, then expands outwards again towards the tips by the addition of more wooden layers. As far as sinew is concerned, the entire length of the back of the bow is sinewed in a single layer of approximately 3 to 4 millimeters thick with no further stacking or addition or layering. Next, the entire bow is wrapped in sinew. The tips of the bow are made from an extended horn layer with a channel for the string cut into them, about 15 centimeters down the belly of the tip. This would of course be useful in homing the string back to the center of the bow and keeping it in place, as well as preventing the bow from twisting. The bow strings are constructed from twisted sinew, with the loops being wrapped in a soft leather. The exact sources of the materials to construct the bows are not known for certain. Some educated guesses have been made and the wood is thought to be that from the tamarisk, which grows in abundance in dry areas such as the area where the bows were discovered. This wood was identified as the material in other Scythian bows found elsewhere. The horn is thought to be that of the Siberian ibex. There is indeed a striking resemblance between the curvature of the outer limbs of the bow and the natural curvature of an ibex's horns. These animals were thought to be plentiful in the area where these bows were found and are still around in sufficient numbers to this day in Xinjiang province. The Scythians are an endlessly fascinating people. Among the first people connecting the east and west via the Silk Road, they left their mark on both European culture via the Greeks as well as Eastern cultures. The Scythian bow is one of the oldest models of composite bows that we currently know of, and yet paradoxically they are relatively complex in their construction, proving a challenge for modern bowers to replicate. It should also be noted that the complex geometry and construction of the bows could be due not only to engineering considerations but more for religious totemic reasons. There is indeed archaeological evidence of ibex worship or cults in Central Asia. The symbol of the ibex was used for many accessories of the Scythians, such as utensils, horse gear, and jewelry. Thanks for watching.